Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the introduction to Microsoft Azure. So what is Azure? Azure is a Microsoft's cloud computing platform with an ever-expanding services to help build solutions to meet your business goals. Basically, we could use all the services from Azure to meet your business goal in a most optimal way. Next, let's see some of the benefits of using Azure and why we need to go for Azure. So the first one is high availability or disaster recovery. The next one is security, enhanced flexibility, low cost, and speed. These are some of the many benefits of using Azure. Let's see these benefits in detail with some examples. I will start with high availability or disaster recovery. Microsoft gives around 99.9% SLA, which stands for service level agreements when you use any Azure services. This means that if you use any services from Azure, it will be available almost 100% of the time, even when there are any updates or changes happening to the services. This leads to high availability of using these services. Also, Microsoft has data centers in different regions around the world. So what is called as a data center? Think of a data center like a collection of servers with massive storage. All the regions that you're seeing on the map have the Azure data centers where user could use this storage. For example, consider you have created a storage in Australia East region and you have enabled the backup policy provided by Azure then even if there are any natural disasters happening in the Australia region and all of your storage has been lost, Microsoft can back up all your data, say for example from India West region, and then you can regain your access to all your data in minutes. So this is extremely useful and the Azure offers this, which is a great benefit. The next one is that Azure offers great security policies, either as a network-based security or as an identity-based security. In the network-based, features like firewalls, virtual private networks can be configured, which restricts the external IPs to access the services or the data. In the identity-based, Azure offers RBAC, which stands for Role-Based Access Control, which is more like a user with a username or password. So the user can use the credentials to authenticate to use any services provided. Also, it supports MFA, which stands for multi-factor authentication, which gives some additional security like getting an OTP in your mobile phone on top of using the username and password. So all these security features can be configured, which helps to secure the Azure services. Also, Azure offers a wide range of security related services like Azure Key Vault, where one could use these services to store all the confidential information like passwords, keys, or secrets. So the Key Vault will store all the information with some of the encryption or decryption technique, which is inbuilt to the services. And services like Azure Active Directory can be used, which is an identity management service, which is used for managing the users, like creating the logins or security groups and stuff. The next one is enhanced flexibility. Azure is very flexible. For example, auto scaling. Here, the compute that I used in Azure can be easy to change to high or less based on your needs. For example, consider a banking application built using the Azure services. Where the application needs high compute during the peak hours, which is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., whereas it just needs the low compute power during the outside hours. In this scenario, we can scale up the compute during the busy hours to handle the customer's request, and the compute can be scaled down during the outside hours, which is Quite very flexible. Also, all the Azure services will have the minimum downtime in the case of any upgrades or any configuration changes, which will not affect the application which is already in live. This is a great feature when compared to the on-premises application, where even if you need to do a little configuration change, we must wait for a long time before going, going to live, which saves a lot of time. Azure supports a wide range of open source framework or programming languages in all of its services, which is really handy and it is very flexible to use any of these to build the cloud solution using Azure. And the next one is an important one, which is the low cost. So the features like 
pay as you go basis helps in minimizing the issue cost to the great extent so what's called pay as you go basis almost all the services that you use in azure will need to be paid for only when used if you are not using the services then you don't have to pay for it which is really cool the user can use the services on demand it's not that the user needs to use any services on subscription instead the user can use any services based on the requirements which will lead to low cost as well also azure provides tools like inbuilt cost management tool where the user can use it to monitor the azure cost pending on the subscription the user can break down the cost from higher to lower level and helps users to create alerting system where the user needs to be notified via an email or other notification when the cost exceeds the budget so these features helps users to manage the cost in the most efficient way the next one is the speed when i say speed it doesn't mean that how fast the services run or something like that in the perspective of azure speed relates to how fast one could create test and deploy the applications developed using the azure services how quickly one can get the solutions to be created tested and deployed this can be achieved using the numerous readily available services provided by azure and the time to create or delete any of these services can be done very quickly which contributes to the speed as well so these are some of the many benefits of azure next we will see some of the services provided by azure i have categorized these into different categories let's see what are the available services in each of these categories firstly i will start with storage which is very important in cloud space the first one is azure data lake storage which is a storage solution in azure pretty much data of any format or any size can be stored using azure data lake the storage is extremely cheap here secondly we have azure table storage which is mainly used to store non relational data which is in a no sql structure so these are two of the many services that are mainly used for storage there are a lot of services available but i'm just going to give two services for each category which will give you some insights on about the services available in azure next let's see iot we have azure iot hub and azure iot central which is mainly used for connecting monitoring or managing the iot devices then we have compute uh, where azure virtual machine is one of the example here if you want to create a virtual machine in either windows or linux you can create one and we have azure functions which is a serverless compute engine mainly used for event driven tasks next in web uh, we have azure app services which is mainly used for creating websites then we have azure cognitive service which is a fully managed search as a service we could use this for creating a search functionality in your application which is similar to kind of a google search the next one is a big data which is my most favorite part uh tools like azure synapse analytics and azure data bricks can be used for doing the big data analytics in networking uh we have azure firewalls and azure virtual network to do all the network related stuff in your cloud application the next one is the database which is the main category where people think of moving into cloud we have azure cosmos db which is a no sql database which is mainly used to store the document structured data then we have azure sql database which is pretty much like the on premise sql database like sql server in ai we have azure machine learning service which is used for training machine learning and all data science stuff we then have azure cognitive services where it has a lot of ai related stuff like vision speech audio as a service to do all kinds of ai related things finally in monitoring we have services like azure monitor azure log analytics which has the monitoring features like alerting if there are anything unusual happens and all other monitoring stuff so as you can see here there are a lot of services available in azure that covers all the different categories which is really rich to develop all kinds of application using azure services in my future videos i'll be covering pretty much all the services that you are seeing here in detail or as a demo next we are going to see about azure accounts creating an azure account is something similar to creating an any application accounts for example like creating a gmail account for instance 
when you create an azure account a tenant is created you can think of a tenant as an account after creating the account you cannot create any resources in the azure for creating any resource we need to create an azure subscription once the subscription has been created we need to create something called resource group consider resource group is same as like a folder in the file structure where you can create a folder you can place multiple files inside the folder likewise once the resource group has been created you can create any resources inside the resource group so the actual flows looks like this the higher level being the tenant and then the issue subscription and then the resource group so we can create a resource only when you have a resource group created already similarly you can only create a resource group only if you have a subscription you can only create a subscription when you create an azure tenant account in the next slide it will make much more sense here you have one azure account using one account you can create any number of subscriptions here we have two subscription and inside one subscription you can create any number of resource group and once the resource group has been created we can create any number of resources inside each of the resource group this is the structure of the azure account in my next video i'll be giving a azure portal overview where we'll be seeing how the tenant subscription resource group looks like in the portal with a demo i hope that will make more sense to you that's it for today uh, please like the video if it is helpful and consider subscribing if you would like to learn more about azure i'll be uploading more videos about azure in the coming days thanks for listening see you in another great video cheers bye